السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أنبياء الله جميعا وعلى سيدهم وخاتمهم حبيب الله العالمين أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المقصومين سيما سيدنا ومولانا الإمام الحجة بن الحسن المهدي المنتظر عجل الله تعالى فرجه وسهل مخرجه وجعلنا من أنصاره وأعوانه أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم فأما إن كان من المقربين فروح وريحان وجنة نعيم صدق الله العلي العظيم Nothing is good for our mental and physical health like the fresh, crisp, reinvigorating air. And this is why people go to the beach, people go to the mountain, sometimes they go to the desert to enjoy this, the cooling breeze of the fresh air. Especially when this air is accompanied by an aroma, a breathtaking scent and a smell. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the scent and the aroma and the perfume of paradise. ريح الجنة روح الجنة In Surah Al-Waqi'ah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says فَأَمَّا إِنْ كَانَ مِنَ الْمُقَرَّبِينَ Allah divides those who are going to make it to paradise into three main groups أصحاب اليمين the people of right and then the مقربين who are higher than them higher in ranking into two groups. The, the Ashab al-Yameen, the people of the right, they sit in business class or maybe economy class. But then the Muqarrabeen are the people of the first class. He says, فَرَوْحٌ Rawhun means comfort. They're going to be comforted. They find comfort in, in paradise. وَرَيْحَانٌ Rayhanun is a reference to the aroma, to the special intoxicating, disorienting, exhilarating scent and perfume of paradise. It is intoxicating. Raihan. Raihan is here in this life, the meaning of Raihan is what? Hmm? You eat, you eat Raihan, you eat Raihan. Remember with kebab you have to eat Raihan, basil. But as we said earlier, these names, the names of the drink, Zanjabil and Sansabil and the name of the fruits, the name of the scent, the name of the dress, the name of the jewelry. These things are symbolic. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says harir, walibasuhum fiha harir, they are going to, to wear and, and, and dressed with silk, it does not resemble the silk of this life. It doesn't. The name is still completely different. Rayhan. So Rayhan, of course, it smells good. It's an herb that smells good. But this is a, an example for people just to get an idea, just to get an idea about what God is talking about. 
But the nature of it and the smell, completely different, intoxicating. If man is able here in this life to make and manufacture certain perfumes that are really intoxicating, these expensive ones are intoxicating. See what God is going to do in paradise for those who are muqarrabeen, those who are very close to him, muqarrabeen, in the highest position. فَرَوْحٌ وَرَيْحَانٌ So this is the sweet basil, but the nature of it is different. And this is a perfume that is going to fill the soul of the muqarrabeen on the day of judgment in paradise. فَرَوْحٌ وَرَيْحَانٌ وَجَنَّةُ نَعِيمَ A garden of bliss. So, smell plays a role. Smell is one of the most important senses that we have. Maybe more important than other senses. And it plays a role in attraction to its peers. Is, is the smell is the perfume, is the scent that they wear, not only brings humans together, even animals are attracted. Certain animals are attracted to the opposite gender through what? Through the smell. And if it is, there was no smell, they would not be attracted. They get attracted through the smell. And therefore, <clears throat> Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says among your among what you have in this life among the attractions of this life dunya this lower life are three to me are three uhibbu min dunyakum thalath from all this dunya that you have i like three items one of them the first one at-tayb the perfume. Though he himself, his natural scent was exhilarating. It was outstanding. It was unique. We've been told that the Prophet in Medina, when he walks in a, in a street, in an alleyway, people come after three days. They pass. They realize that the Prophet passed through this alleyway. After three days. And he adored perfume and tib. He adored it. And he would spend, كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم ينفق على الطيب أكثر مما ينفق على الطعام. He would allocate money for perfume more than allocating money for food. Spending money on perfume more than spending money on food. Usually we spend money, the most item that consumes our budget is food. Especially now, food is very expensive after pandemic. But the Prophet ﷺ would spend money on perfume, atr, on tayyib. And he used to tell his companions always, you have to smell good. Don't sm smell kunky and stinky and and a pleasant. This is not good. When you smell bad, malaika are not going to come to the mosque. Angels are not going to come. In fact, angels, they stopped coming for some time. And when, when, when the companions, they asked the Prophet, Ya Rasulullah, why the angels are not coming down? He said, how come down while you are not smelling good? Your smell is not pleasant, it's not acceptable. They are not going to come. He said, Malaika, they get annoyed. When there is bad smell, they get annoyed. Subhanallah, they are very sensitive. Some people are very sensitive to the smell. Some people do not care. Their entire life, they, you know, they smell bad and they don't care about other people smelling bad. But others are sensitive. So he said, you have to have a shower, take a shower, clean yourself, cleanse yourself. 
Use the tib. In fact, the best gift you can give to your brother and sister and to your family member is tib. Perfume. Not cheap perfume. Huh? Don't buy it from, you know, vendors in the streets. You know, in Mecca and Medina, when you go, they sell you for, for two real, for 50 cents. Don't, don't buy these things. These, some of them are poisonous, by the way. Don't use them. Buy expensive ones. When you take a gift to your a birthday, gift to your friend, to your family member, to your father, to your mother, to your brother and sister, buy them something good. He would encourage the community to wear atr. And in fact, mu'mineen, since we are in the month of Ramadan, one of the mustahab and highly recommended acts of this month, the month of Ramadan, is to wear perfume. Wear perfume. Whether you are indoor or outdoor, whether you are at home, seeing nobody, no one, you are at home in your room, in your bedroom, or you are outside, in both cases, wear perfume. And teach your family member to wear perf perfume. Invite them to wear perfume. And if they don't listen, go and buy them so you can embarrass them. Buy them perfume, tell them, listen, this is $150. I purchased this. I cut back on my food so you can smell good. We have to teach people. We have to encourage them. Some people need to be reminded. Reminded, constantly reminded until they learn. And this is part of tawasaw. Wa tawasaw bil haqqi wa tawasaw when it, something is good, we don't keep it only for ourselves. We have to share it and spread it and promote it in the community. When it comes to nadafa, Islam is number one. Islam is very sensitive and very keen on the matter of cleanliness. Your place has to be clean. Your mosque has to be clean. Your car has to be clean. Your office your neighborhood, your driveway, your backyard, your front yard, your bedroom, your kitchen, your living room, yourself, your dress, has, you have to be clean. How many ghusls we have, ghusl, how many? Every night it's mustahab in Ramadan. Every night it's recommended that you, you take a shower. Every night. Plus, Ghusl al-Jumu'ah, which is almost mandatory, almost. Ghusl al-Jumu'ah, almost mandatory. To take a shower in the morning before you come to the masjid. And if you take a shower, Ghusl al-Jumu'ah, you don't have to do wudu for the Friday prayers. It suffices for the wudu. The Friday shower, Ghusl al-Jumu'ah, when you do the knee of Ghusl, you wash your head and neck and shoulders. And then the right side, left side, you don't have to do wudu if you come to the masjid. Yes, Habibi, because the salat is, is, is before noon, so at noon. So, of course, of course, if you take the shower before noon, so it's enough for the salat. You don't have to do wudu. And there are plenty of showers. The day of Eid, you know, almost every day we have a shower, mustahab shower, every day. And imagine these things came at the time where there was no running water, no hot water, no bath at home. People had to go outside. Now we have, alhamdulillah, we have showers in your own bedroom. You have shower. You have running water. You have hot water. You have shampoo. You can take a shower in seven minutes. At that time, it cost him three hours to go out to find some water, running water, you know, a river, a, you know. Sometimes they had to carry the water into their room in the winter, in the summer. It wasn't easy. But still, Islam said this is number one a priority. So going back to perfume, Atrul Jannah, Rihul Jannah. It is really intoxicating. Farawhun wa Rayhanun wa Jannatu Naim. By the way, those who lose the sense of smell. Have you seen some people? They say we don't smell. Do you remember during the pandemic, the first casualty was the sense of smell. People don't smell. What, what, do, what do they call this? The loss of smell. What do they call it? Hmm? 
No, no, medically what they call it, anosmia. Sometimes it is permanent damage, sometimes it is temporary, sometimes it is completely, complete loss, sometimes it is partial. Scientists say if someone loses the sense of a smell, it is going to lead into isolation. It is going to compromise his human relationship with his family, with his friends, and it could lead into depression. This is how the sense of a smell is precious and important in our life. It could lead into depression. So people have to seek treatment for this. Don't ignore it. It plays a role. Your brain, your brain gets happy and peaceful and tranquil when there is a beautiful aroma. So don't blame people when they spend a lot of money on perfume, a lot of money. This is the sunnah, the tradition of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So, inshallah, when we go to paradise, you enter paradise, you're going to enjoy this scent, this smell, this perfume, a special perfume of paradise. It's going to bring you peace, sense of peace, tranquility. I've heard and I read reports that there are some companies here in America, they come to your institution, whether it's a church, it's an office building, it's a medical building, it's a school, whatever. And then they install some devices which spreads, you know, nice, nice scent and it costs a lot. And when you tell them that this is expensive, they say, if you want to attract the customers, if you want them to be attracted to your product, to what you are selling, even the, to the contract that they're going to sign with you, then you have to spend some money on this scent. It is convincing. Imagine when you enter a house or a place and it is, smells good. You respect that place. Unlike when you enter a place when it smells Qurma Sabzi, like here, you know. Qurma Sabzi. People eat and they don't clean after that. Doesn't smell good. It's not good. The smell of paradise. Now, what is the distance you can smell something? A beautiful scent or a bad one? What is the distance? From what distance? What is the maximum distance you can smell something good? Smell fruits, a flower, certain trees, certain plants, you know, or perfume, or a person. What is the distance? From what distance? 20 feet? Sometimes it's more than that. If the smell is terrible and bad, you can smell it from kilometers in this life here. How far the smell of paradise, Rihul Jannah, Atrul Jannah, the fragrance of paradise travels? How far? What does the Prophet say? Even before you see paradise on the day of judgment, when you are going towards paradise and you still you have not seen it, you can smell the fragrance and the scent of paradise. Before seeing it, the Prophet says, travels 500 years. وَإِنَّ رِيحَهَا لَيُوجَدُ مِنْ خَمِسْمِئَةِ عَامٍ 500 years distance. People can, can smell have you, when you go to the mall and you go to these, you know, huge departments in the, in the mall, like Macy's or 
What else helped me? I, Nordstrom. And if you go to the section where they sell the makeup and perfume, even before you enter that section, you can smell the scent. Do you feel that or not? Yeah. Alhamdulillah, you feel that. So I'm not the only one. And sometimes you'd love to stay there, even if you don't want to buy because of this scent. Sometimes at the duty-free shops, at airports, when you go to the section of the perfumes, you want to stay there longer because it smells good. It changes your mood. It empowers you, reinvigorates you. Imagine if man can make this effect, what God is going to make. God is the creator of this perfume. God is the creator of this special scent of paradise. So it travels for a long distance. But the Prophet ﷺ says, some people, despite this long distance that the Rihul Jannah, the scent of paradise, travels, still some people are not going to be able to smell it and to enjoy it. Ammar says they have permanent corona, permanent damage. Who are those people who have this permanent damage? Can you give me an example? Of course, those people are not going to make it to paradise. But even, even if they pass by, you know, thousands of kilometers, they are not going to smell. They are not going to be able. They will be deprived from smelling this beautiful, intoxicating fragrance. Who are they? Number one. Someone who is and dutiful to his parents. And dutiful to his parents. And kind to his parents. Someone who never say to his parents, I appreciate what you did for me. I appreciate sacrificing your life, your time, your money, your energy, your rest, your sleep, your health to bring me up to make me who I am today, never appreciates, very selfish. The most selfish person is the one who does not respect his parents. And when he does not respect his parents, definitely he's not going to respect any person. Those who are selfish with their mothers and fathers most likely are going to be selfish with their wives and husbands too, with their spouses. Aqul walidain, and dutiful to his parents. He's not going to smell Rihul Jannah. The Prophet says, the Prophet says, though Rihul Jannah travels 500, you can smell, you can feel the fragrance from 500 years, but this person is going to be deprived. Do not be any dutiful, even if you don't like your parents. Do not be harsh with your parents. Even your, if your parents are atheist, atheists, they don't believe in God. There is no reason for you to hate them. If they ask you to do something wrong, say so. I cannot follow. If they struggle and force you to disbelieve in me, that's it. Don't be harsh with them. Don't curse them. Politely, do not listen. Politely. But don't be harsh to them. Even if they are atheists, there is no reason for us to be bad and evil with our parents. So this is one example. The person who is not going to smell the fragrance of paradise. What is the second example? Who's the second example who's going to be deprived from smelling the perfume, the fragrance, this breathtaking scent and aroma of paradise? 
Man qatala mu'ahadan A person who kills a non-Muslim who is under the protection of the Islamic society. There is an Islamic society and there are some non-Muslims who live, Jews, Christians, others, others. They live under the protection of this society. So if someone kills and justly kills a non-Muslim, Mu'ahad, Mu'ahad comes from treaty, from Mu'ahad. Mu'ahad means a treaty. This person has a treaty with the Islamic society, a contract. He says, I live among you. I'm not a Muslim, but I live among you and I'm not going to hurt you. I'm not going to conspire against you. I, I'm not going to be a threat to the national security. I'm going to be an ordinary citizen, but I'm not a Muslim. This is called Mu'ahad. Mu'ahad is under this treaty. So if someone, a Muslim, comes and murders this person, be it male, female, old, young, this person is not going to smell the fragrance of paradise for killing Muslim, killing non-Muslim. He's a Muslim and he killed a non-Muslim. God says, not, not only he's not going to see paradise, he's not going to smell the fragrance of paradise. لا يجد ريح الجنة لا يجد ريح الجنة what is the third example of people who are not going to find and feel the fragrance of paradise? What does the Prophet says? He says, النِّسَاءُ الْكَاسِيَاتُ الْعَارِيَاتِ Women who are naked, they walk naked in the street. Not completely naked, but half naked. They expose their body. They expose their bodies in, in public. Those women are not going to smell the fragrance of paradise, let alone seeing paradise or experiencing it or entering into it. Because also they destroy, they destroy the morality of the society. This is a danger. A danger to the moral integrity of the society. God wants us to protect our private parts, to protect our bodies. It's not for public display. It's not for public display. You may display it for your husband, but not outside the home, not to the strangers. They're going to take advantage of you. No person is going to respect you when you display when you display your private parts. No one is going to respect you. They're going to exploit you. And there is a difference between respect and exploitation. Exploit, he wants to fulfill his desire with you for half an hour, and then he recycles you in the recycle bin. Doesn't even ask about you. This is not respect. He's not interested in you. He's not interested in you, in your character, in your manner. He's interested in something specific to fulfill his desire. So don't do that. Don't cheapen yourself. Honor yourself, protect yourself, and protect your society. So this is the third example. What is the fourth example of people who do not smell the fragrance of paradise on the Day of Judgment? You have to tell me one of them at least. Have to guess. Try. Maybe. Qati' <clears throat> al-Rahim. Qati' al-Rahim. Yes, maybe the one who disconnect with his next of kin. Maybe one of them. But again, there is another example where the Prophet mentions in his hadith. The hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Mudmin al khamr the one who is addicted to drinking. Mudmin, not once in a while. Though once in a while is haram, forbidden. But maybe God is going to forgive him. But someone who is addicted, addicted every single day. Because that person is going to 
He's going to what? What will happen to that person here in this life? Before he dies, what will happen to him? Hmm? That person is going to lose his own honor, his own value. Ja'far ibn Abi Talib, the brother of Imam Ali, even during the time of jahiliya, the time of ignorance, the time of corruption, where, where wine, khamr, was on every meal, in every menu, in every house, in every room. It was similar to tea today. Have you seen tea today? It's found in most homes, 99% of the homes they have tea. This was wine during, before the pre-Islamic era. Ja'far did, did not drink. Now, Ja'far is not an imam. If the Prophet does not drink, Prophet Muhammad, if Imam Ali, they don't drink, they are imams, they are leaders, they are prophets. Prophet Muhammad is a prophet, Imam Ali is an imam, successor to the prophet. But Ja'far is neither a prophet nor an imam. And God informed the prophet, Ya Rasulullah, I have respect for Ja'far because he has four qualities, four good qualities. One of them is that he did not drink. He did not even taste wine. It's not easy, my friends, when you live in a society. Is it easy in this society to live for 60, 70 years and you don't taste tea or coffee? Even if you don't like it, sometimes some people force you. He lived for so many years, he did not taste wine. One of them is wine. The others, I'm not going to mention them. The other three characters. So the Prophet asked him, he said, Ja'far, and he's the first cousin of the Prophet. The Prophet said to him, Ya Ja'far, this is Jibreel, inform me that God is valuing your four characters and he's being grateful and thankful to you for maintaining these three, these four characters. You know what Ja'far said? Look at sincerity. Look at ikhlas. This is ikhlas. Most people do not have ikhlas. Most people. We want people to know about, you know, when we do something good, we want the whole world to know about it. We don't keep it between us and God. Ja'far said, Ya Rasulullah, trust me. If God had not informed you about it, I would never say this to you. But because God has already told you and you are asking me, so I will tell you. This is a khlas. Because he didn't do it for public display. He didn't do it for social media. He did it for God. One of them is, I did not drink wine. In Jahiliya, not after Islam. Now, after Islam, it's forbidden. But during the time where wine was essential, wine was the favorite, favorite drink of the Arab in Mecca, of Quraysh in Mecca, their favorite drink was wine. Two things, they called them the most favorite, two things, the Arabs in Mecca, pre-Islamic era. One of them is fornication, zina. The other is wine, al atyaban They call them al atyaban the most delicious. <laughs> they call them the most delicious. Zina, fornication, and wine. So the Prophet said to him, why, Ja'far, why you did not? Why you had such self-control that you did not drink wine? He said, Ya Rasulullah, because I realized, لِأَنَّهُ يُزِيلُ الْعَقْلِ takes away, takes your senses away from you. And I did not want to lose my senses. Because if I lose my senses, if I lose my reason, if I lose my aql, I lose my respect. I lose my respect. So I stayed away from that. So the Prophet here says, Murtminul Khamr, the one who is addicted to wine, is not going to smell the fragrance of paradise. Inshallah, tomorrow we're going to continue on the description of paradise in the Quran. And tomorrow, Thursday, we're going to speak about what subject? Guess. So far, we spoke about the food, 
the drink, the dress, the smell, the homes, what else we spoke about in paradise? The rivers, the rivers, the trees, the, uh, the landscape in paradise. Tomorrow we're going to speak about something else. We're going to speak about Hurul Ain, inshallah. Women, women and, and marriage in paradise. As one of the sisters said, how many wives are you going to marry? And whether, whether single women here in this life, single men and women, who led a life of, let's say, celibacy, they did not get married here. They stayed away from marriage. They didn't have a family. Are they going to have a family and marriage? God forbids if they die and they are single, never married, or they were divorced, or, you know, so are they going to, who are they going to marry? Who's going to be their husband? Or if they are, if they are men, who's going to be their wives? This is for tomorrow. So prepare, don't eat a lot so you can pay attention to the lecture tomorrow, Thursday. Inshallah, we have iftar Thursday, Friday, and Saturday we have iftar, inshallah. And as we said, inshallah, the day of Eid, is definitely on Wednesday. Neither a Tuesday nor Thursday. Wednesday and the Salat, Takbirat is 7.45 and the Salat is 8 sharp, inshallah. Allahumma ghfar lil mu'mineen wal mu'minat wal muslimin wal muslimat al ahya'i minhum wal amwat tabi' allahumma baynana wa baynahum bil khayrat innaka mujibu al-da'awat innaka ghafru al-khati'at innaka mahi al-sayyat wa ja'iluha hasanat اللهم تقبل صلاتنا وصيامنا ودعاءنا في هذا الشهر العظيم وجعلنا من عتقائك من النار Don't forget to purchase perfume inshallah wear a lot of perfume وإلى أرواح المؤمنين والمؤمنات نهدي للجميع ثواب سورة الفاتحة مع الصلاة على محمد وآل محمد وعجل لهم وفي فرج سيدنا ومولانا صاحب العصر والزمان اللهم صل على محمد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم